Welcome to another video from the Heart Factory. And now the next few videos will be on the technique of venous cannulation for cardiopulmonary bypass, either for mitral valve replacement or for aortic valve replacement or for coronary artery bypass drafting. Even in the setting of mix, say either a right axillary thoracotomy or lower meniscinotomy, certain simple modifications will make our life easier to cannulate the venous system and establish a cardiopulmonary bypass. So without wasting much time, let's go ahead with the videos. So the first part of the demonstration will be a bicaval cannulation for a patient with severe mitral stenosis severe tricuspid regurgitation and severe pulmonary artery hypertension as you can see here both the RA and MP are very tense. The first part of the venous cannulation always starts after you take the first things for the aortic cannulation site and then make preparations to go around the SVC. For this you have to just open the pericardium or the tissues on the right pulmonary artery on the right side of the ascending iota and without much disturbance just go around the SVC and pass in a tape. Make sure you don't injure the sinoatrial node, you don't injure the azygous vein and also make sure that you have uh, enough size of the SVC. If the SVC is short you can just open this fold and have enough length of SVC to cannulate it uh, depending on the size of the venous cannula you need to take the purse string. Now opening this fold is not a good idea because it may lead to right-sided pleural effusion in the post-operative period. So avoiding the area of the SCA node, take a long purse string to accommodate the venous cannula that is chosen for this particular state. Mind you, this is a heart which is quite dilated, so kind of overload state, so you need to have an, a bigger side SVC cannula and the purse string is taken in a kind of a triangular fashion as you can see at the top end there will be one limb towards the assistant side one limb towards the surgeon side and the tip is towards the pericardial fold now once this is taken you can also make preparations to put on RA purse string or open the RA feel for the RA appendage in chronic cases you may have clots or the crista terminalis or the muscle in the RA appendage may be very very prominent. Taking a RA per string is um, helpful for three reasons. First, you can establish cardiopulmonary bypass by opening the RA appendage and then you can handle the SVC and IVC separately after you go on bypass with RA cannula. This will avoid any hemodynamic compromise. This is useful in say emergency setting. This is also useful when you come off bypass after you've done the case with bicaval cannulation. And um, this is also useful in patients who may need brief cardiopulmonary bypass support. Other important thing with this is that you may tie the bicaval cannulation after the surgery, put on the RA cannula and wait for the hemodynamics to improve and then come off bypass. By doing so, there will not be any bleeding of the IVC and SVC or you can handle them independently with the collapsed heart. Like any other scenarios, the lines are DA, especially the aortical side and the venous side as well and preparation are made for the venous side to accommodate the SVC and the IVC separately. A Y cannula is placed and the separate tubings are connected to this connector. In case of a left SVC, a Y on Y is made so that it accommodates three different cannulas. Some venous cannula come with connector and if not, you can put on the connectors and be ready. So the first step in establishing cardiopulmonary bypass is to do the aortic cannulation. By doing so, you'll be able to handle the hypotension of venous cannulation. You will be able to handle the hypotension of atrial arrhythmias that may happen with venous cannulation or you may be able to handle the hypotension of IVC cannulation as well with aortic cannula in C2 perfusing through the aortic cannula. So the SVC cannulation is the first when you have a clear cut scenario. The assistant holds one limb, the surgeon holds the other limb, there is a cardiotomy sucker in the transverse sinus 
and you pass the venous cannula. Always make sure the marker is towards the anesthetist side. Always make sure to make an opening that is snugly enough for the cannula to go in. Lest if you make a bigger hole, you may have air lock. Always look for the swing in the cannula that is possible only when the patient is ventilating or when breathing. When you have a swing in the venous cannula, it means that the cannula is within the SVC and the patient is breathing. At the same stage, also make sure that the cable snares are put within the snuggers so that the procedure is done in a step-by-step -step fashion and then connect the SVC to one limb of the CPB circuit. Once that is done, fix the cannula in a position that it will not be disturbing you during the rest of the procedure and this will be attended only whilst coming off bypass. Now you can go on bypass with this single CPB cannula. Now as you can see we are going on bypass with this single CPB cannula. You can see the right ventricle collapsing that means the SVC is draining very well. You can also do this by going on bypass through the right atrial cannula and then cannulating the SVC. You will be seeing that strategy in the next videos. Now one has to pay attention to looping the IVC. You can do a bit of suction dissection as you can see here and then uh, you can loop the IVC. Mind you the cannula in the oblique sinus is pushing the right ventricle away. That is a very important maneuver and that is a very excellent maneuver both to cannulate the IVC and also to go around the IVC. As you can see here the hole of the IVC is very well exposed. You can easily go around pass a cable tape so that at a later stage you can snug the IVC to establish total cardiopulmonary bypass. Now after that is done, with the heart collapsed, with the heart on partial bypass with the SVC cannula, you can take the IVC purse ring. The hemodynamics are not at all disturbed because you are already on cardiopulmonary bypass. Take a purse ring that is big enough to accommodate the venous cannula because you may need a bigger cannula in this scenario where the heart is very big and the heart is in kind of a right heart failure situation. Now once the purse string is taken, there is a cardiotomy sucker in the oblique sinus which sucks in all the blood. It also retracts the RV. You make a decent opening in the IVC and then pass the IVC cannula. The tip has to be turned towards the foot end of the patient so that it drains the IVC. If you have the tip in the RA, and you go on bypass or open the RA, you will definitely land up in venous obstruction because of air lock. So once that is done, again as said before, the sequencing has to be correct. Put the cable snares on the snugger and then connect the IVC cannula to the IVC limb of the CPB circuit. Now once you open this cannula, you are establishing total cardiopulmonary bypass. The heart is fully collapsed. Mind you, the pulmonary artery is also fully collapsed. So that means the whole venous return is diverted to the reservoir. Now once the procedure is done, you can come off first by removing the IVC cannula. So you will be knowing that the hemodynamics are great and at appropriate stage, remove the IVC cannula first. In this scenario, I have done an MVR with CABG, so the taking care of the graft is also very important. Tie the IVC whilst the heart is still on bypass. This way, the hemodynamics is taken care of by the cardiopulmonary bypass circuit. Tie the IVC cannula, make sure there is no bleeding and even if there is bleeding, you can overrun the IVC site by putting in a security suture. And uh, this all can be done under vision, without tension without compromising the hemodynamics. So once this is done, you can pay attention to the rest of the hemodynamics by leaving the SVC cannula in C2. Mind you, in this situation, the graft of the SVC has kinked. You can see that. 
Now while it's coming off bypass, once the hemodynamics are good and once I'm off bypass, I'll remove the cable tapes and I'll remove the SVC cannula. So once I remove the SVC cannula, I'm quite ready for administration of uh, protamine. In this case, the RCA graft is king and um, I have reconstituted the graft off bypass by putting a side biting clamp. So if you're not using the RA cannula, you can tie the suture off. And if you are using the RA cannulation site, then that will be the last suture to come off after administrating protamine. As usual, if you have some comments or if you have some recommendations for me to improve my videos, I would really appreciate if you can drop them in the comment section so that I can apply them in my next videos. If you like my videos, please click the like button and uh, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Please ring the bell just to be notified of my next video in time. Suggestions are almost welcome. Request you to keep watching this space for more videos. Till then, thank you.